Let's talk about a different aspect of the oil and gas bonanza. Your relationship with the key oil corporation which undertook the exploration and undertakes much of the production, that is Exxon. They've been here from the very beginning. Yes. Why did Guyana give Exxon such an extraordinarily sweet deal which gives them an unprecedented amount of economic gain from their work here? Well, first of all, uh, this, this uh, agreement was made under the last government. We and have, you have not have changed all, it, Mr. Brady? Yes, no, and I'm coming to that because there is uh, something called sanctity of contract. What message are we going to send to international investors? If you have a contract and then you just change the contract. When Exxon came to Guyana to explore for oil, they came to explore for oil. There was no, no one said oil is here. They invested, they explored for oil. After they would have completed the exploration, they found oil. After they found oil, there's a production sharing agreement that was signed by the last government. An agreement that was signed by the last government. You only get, if I may say so, and of course no, you, no, know, I, I, you we, only get 2% royalties. It's a 50% profit share after cost recovery. And, and, and the cost recovery, as I understand it, is going into the many billions of dollars already, i.e. Exxon is basically saying, we're not going to give you much of a share of this because think about the vast expense we have had developing these no, oil No, I, I no, think, I think that's, that's totally a misconception. First of all, I'm agreeing with you that it was a bad deal. We have said this publicly, but we cannot move from a bad deal to a situation where you, 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 you unilaterally change a contract. Simple question. Is, that is sense... Guyana being exploited right now by Exxon? Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We got to talk about this fascinating interview between woke BBC reporter uh, Stephen Sakar and the president of Guyana, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali. Now, before I get into this interview, I have to give you guys some context on this interview and what they're talking about in the discussion around Guyana, which is a South American country on the Atlantic coast that recently, thanks to a partnership with ExxonMobil, discovered a ton of oil in its waters okay waters that are being contested disputed by venezuela how about i think uh thanks to exxon mobile and a partnership between the united states um essentially uh most of that drilling that is happening off the coast of guyana is actually benefiting guyana uh and that is going to them right i mean this is enabled this country to essentially develop economically because historically this country that has a history a past of colonialism has been a poor country okay it's a small country of about 800,000 people that uh has a lot of biodiversity i mean rainforests cover approximately 87 percent of its land and up until the discovery of that oil um they essentially made money by selling carbon credits totaling 250 million dollars they were essentially getting paid to save the planet right they were being praised by the woke powers for not developing their country remaining poor okay in exchange for playing their part as a poor country in the whole climate change agenda okay but again after this oil was discovered uh, with the help of ExxonMobil, they decided that, hey, you know what? We can actually allow ExxonMobil to drill. We can benefit from becoming an oil-producing country, and we can develop, okay? We can save our country, uh, not just when it comes to the economy and development for the people, but also when it comes to the threats that are posed by climate change because uh, a vast majority of that country is in danger of sea level rise and they need that money. They need that economic development in order to mitigate the effects of climate change. You can see the conundrum that Guyana is in, okay? And they have benefited to a tune of $3.5 billion dollars so far from this deal that they struck when it comes to extracting oil off the coast of their country and now you have woke powers woke journalists like this bbc reporter that are now criticizing guyana 
for one, signing this deal that they feel is exploitative, okay, of the country with ExxonMobil, but also allowing the oil to be extracted and allowing these carbon emissions into the atmosphere, which goes against the woke climate change agenda. And the president of this country is pushing back against this woke reporter, criticizing this country and the president for doing what they have to do to help develop their country economically in order to mitigate and to save their country from the potential devastating effects of climate change. And this was probably one of the most fascinating and satisfying exchanges, beatdowns of a woke reporter that I've ever seen. Take a look. Let's take a big picture look at what's going on here. Over the next uh, decade, two decades, it is uh, expected that there will be 150 billion dollars worth of oil and gas extracted off your coast. It's an extraordinary figure, but think of it in practical terms. That means, according to many experts, more than two billion tons of carbon emissions will come from your seabed, from those reserves, and be released into the atmosphere. I, I don't know if you as a head of state went to the COP in Dubai. Let me stop Dubai. you right there. Let me stop you right there. Do you know that Guyana has a forest forever that is the size of England and Scotland combined? A forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon? A forest that we have kept alive? A forest that we have kept alive. Does that give you the right? No, does no, that no, no. give you I, the that, right that, to release that, that all of this right? carbon? Does from that give you the right to, to lecture us on climate change? I am going to lecture you on climate change because we have kept this forest alive that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon that you enjoy, that the world enjoy, that you don't pay us for, that you don't value, that you don't see a value in, that the people of Ghana has kept alive. Guess what? We have the lowest deforestation rate in the world. And guess what? Even with our greatest exploration of the oil and gas resource we have now, we will still be uh, net zero. Guyana will still be net zero. With all our exploration, we will points. still be net zero. No, no, pa there's no, no... Powerful, no, powerful no, no, words, no, no, no. Mr. President. Hold, 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 hold. But a, a couple... I, I'm not completed as yet. I am not finished as yet. I am just not finished as yet. Because this is the hypocrisy that exists in the world. We, the world in the last 50 years, has lost 65% of all its biodiversity. We have kept our biodiversity. Are you valuing it? Are you ready to pay for it? When is the developed world going well, to pay for it? Or are you, you in the pockets? You, are you in the pockets of those who have damaged the environment? Are you in the pockets? Are you and your system in the pockets of those who destroyed the environment through the industrial revolution and now lecturing us? Are you in their pockets? Are you paid by them? Are you paid right, to keep right, their Mr. messages? President. Life, there is no hypocrisy in our position. The Center for there, International there Environmental no Law hypocrisy. has described the oil and gas production in Guyana as turning your country from, as you rightly put it, a carbon sink into a potential, quote, carbon bomb. Now, you may say you have every right that, to exploit that, that, that is, oil that and gas. That is ridiculous. We, even with our, even with exploring, and, and, and production of all our resources, we are going to still be carbon neutral. We are still going to be carbon neutral. Let me quote to you Greenpeace, who say quite simply, to avoid the worst impacts of climate change, and you know that your own country is one of the most vulnerable to climate change, because most, most of your population lives and, below and, and, sea and, level. And we have paid, guess what? Guess what? We have paid for the mitigation. We have paid for the adop uh, adaptation. We are the ones who have to find revenue. So no, 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 no. I want to I haven't we finished telling you what level. Greenpeace say. Yes, but let me tell Greenpeace Green say we need to keep the majority of the world's remaining fossil fuels in the ground. Yeah, Greenpeace can say You're that. You're not doing that. Greenpeace and you can say that. But we need to get resources and the developing world, we need to get resources to build the sea defenses. We need to get sea defenses to build a drainage and irrigation system. You just said that we are six feet below sea level. Who is going to pay for the infrastructure? Who is going to pay for the drainage and irrigation? Who is going to pay for the development and advancement of our country? Are you going to pay? It's not coming from anywhere. It's not coming from Greenpeace or anyone else. Look at the adaptation 
budget that is required for the developing world. Where is the money coming from? Isn't there a cynicism here in Georgetown, best expressed by your vice president, who said recently, because there is this climate change imperative to decarbonize, our policy is to get as much oil out of the ground as quickly as possible. Now, he said, that's harsh for those who think that you should be environmentally sound, but that is the reality of it. Those were very honest words from your vice president. And that is what we are, honest, we are practical. So you're we're, rushing, rushing to get this oil practical. out before we, any deal is that, done that, to quote you, Dubai COP to transition away from oil and you, gas. You can say we are rushing, but we have this natural resource and we are going to aggressively pursue this natural resource mm. because we have to develop our country. We are committed to the development of this region. We have to create the opportunity for our people because no one is bringing that for us. You, you, no one is bringing that for us. No one is paying our agenda. Just a, no a, one is paying our a, agenda. A, a, a wow, wow, that was one of the most powerful exchanges I've ever seen. Okay, because this president is right. Okay, he is a hundred percent right when it comes to this issue. Okay, because again, historically speaking, this has been a poor country. Okay, that has been subject to exploitation, colonialism, and they just haven't had the opportunity to develop okay and now that they have what is a powerful resource that they can use to develop their country in the face of you know what a lot of people say is happening uh sea level rise their country is below sea level a, a lot of their country and they are on the brink of facing a disaster if sea level does rise and having their country wiped out they need to adapt okay and they need to adapt quickly and to tell a country that hey you can't extract this resource you can't take advantage of billions of dollars that you can use to help your people and your country survive because you must do your part to save the planet even though doing your part is not going to help save the planet when you have china still admitting a third of the world's carbon emissions when you have the west still emitting a significant portion of the world's carbon emissions when everybody else is still admitting and they have went through their industrial revolutions they have become developed in rich economies based off fossil fuels how the hell can you tell the leader of a country that is trying to develop, that's trying to get there, that's trying to save his country, to save his people, that they can't drill, they can't take advantage of a natural resource off their coast the same way that developed nations have taken advantage of uh, fossil fuels and the natural resources in their country in order to develop and to put all these carbon emissions into the atmosphere that they now say is a threat to the planet. It's ridiculous, right? It's ludicrous, okay? It is absolutely ludicrous. And you know the funny part about this? You know the most hilarious part about this? The most hilarious part. 63% of Guyana's total exports in oil are going to, guess what? Guess where it's going? Europe. Going to Europe. Well, why is that? Why is that? Why, why is Europe all of a sudden allowing this developing oil producer to export their oil to them well the reason why is because they need that oil well why do they need that oil because of the sanctions on russia the sanctions on russia have opened up opportunities for countries like guyana that are trying to become oil producing countries to be able to sell their oil to the european market because europe doesn't want russian oil right which again is the hilarious part about this right that is the hilarious part okay so again, it's just, it's fascinating me because this goes back to the conversation about climate change in general. What I've always said about climate change is that if you accept what is happening is true, if you believe what is happening is true, you are never going to actually stop what is currently happening, okay? Because the world needs oil, right? And fossil fuels are the key to adaptation, okay? You're not going to mitigate climate change as long as China is producing, okay? As long as India, as long as the West, as long as we're all emitting, which is going to happen, you have to, in order to have the standard of living that we have. You're never going to mitigate what is happening. You're not going to stop or reverse what is happening. Maybe in the future, you know, with the development of certain technologies, maybe that'll happen. 
But whatever is happening and the effects of what is going to happen in the future, the best way to adapt is with fossil fuels. For example, when Europe was going through uh, their heat wave, I think last year, maybe a couple years ago, massive heat wave, historical heat wave. Guess what they needed to do? They needed to use fossil fuels, right? They needed to start burning that good old coal in order to keep people from dying from the overwhelming heat, okay? Because the renewable energy, okay, it was not enough. It's not enough. But yet they tell these developing countries, no, no, no. You can't take advantage of your natural resources in order to have your own industrial revolutions and to develop your nation and your economy and to have a better standard of living for your people. No, 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 you can't do that. You have to actually um, buy and use the renewable energy technologies from us, the technologies that are not enough to even sustain the Western powers that want to force these renewable energies on these developing countries, right? No, 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 you can't use your oil. Don't use your natural resources. Don't, no, 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 you can't do that. You have to use renewable sources of energy, right? Clean, green energy. You got to play your part to help save the planet. Even though these countries playing their part, okay, not going through their industrial revolutions, okay, the same way that the Western powers did, it's not going to do a damn thing to stop climate change, right, at all. Okay, Guyana choosing not to take advantage of their natural resources, oil is not going to change what is going to happen with climate change. What's going to happen is going to happen regardless because the rest of the world, again, China is still emitting, right? They're still emitting. So Guyana faces a choice of, okay, do we do our part to save the planet and still have to suffer the effects or do we decide to save ourselves and to take advantage of our natural resources in order to develop our economy, to develop our country so that we can adapt to what may happen, right? Again, that, that's a choice that is an obvious choice, right? That's an obvious choice. Of course, they're going to save themselves. Of course, they're going to do what they got to do to adapt. Because again, it's not like uh, the UK or, you know, these European powers or these, you know, woke countries. It's not like they're going to pay for Guyana to develop and to be able to sustain themselves and to um, adapt to the effects of climate change. They're not paying for it. So how else are they going to do it? What are they supposed to do? They just supposed to, well, we're not going to drill and then our people will drown, right? We're just going to let our country get destroyed because we, we need to do our part to save the planet. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous to think about, right? So again, I thought that, that interview was fascinating. I thought that, um, you know, that president had a good point, okay? And, and it really does highlight some of the, the, the hypocrisy coming from these developed nations that try to lecture these developing nations on how to use their natural resources or whether or not to use their natural resources because they must play their part to save the planet. When, again, the developed nations, uh, you could argue based off their own science, right, that, hey, you guys are responsible for this in the first place, right? So, yeah, uh, we should be allowed to do what we want to do in regards to what's best for our country. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.